bronchoscopes are a tool that are used to look inside the patient's airway, and they're used every day in hospitals around the world. But that doesn't mean that the technology is static. We're here in the ECRI lab with Mairead Smith, a principal project engineer on ECRI's device evaluation team, to talk about what she's seeing as she evaluates bronchoscopes in the ECRI lab. Mairead, you've been testing bronchoscopes here in our lab. What's a bronchoscope? So a bronchoscope is an endoscope that is used to look into the airway and lungs of a patient. Um, so it can be inserted either, either through the nose or through the mouth, um, goes down through the trachea and into the bronchi of the lungs. Why might somebody need that done? Um, there are a lot of actually different reasons. So um, one of the most basic is for a complicated intubation. Um, if they're trying to intubate a patient, can't get the airway in place where they want it to go, um, they might use a bronchoscope uh, in addition to a laryngoscope um, to help them navigate any complications. Um, they may also use it for suction if there are secretions in the lungs that need to be removed. Um, similarly, they can do testing, so they can do a bronchial lavage where they inject a certain amount of fluid and then suction that back out, and then they can do testing on that fluid. Um, and more complicated applications are uh, sometimes done in the bronchoscopy suite where you do more interventional procedures um, or uh, diagnostic procedures where they're looking for something in particular. So is the, the bronchoscope like the one you have in your hand, is it more than just a camera? Because you talked about suction and, and injection, or is that really just a camera? So it's a little bit of everything. So um, we have the, uh, I believe it's called the control body up here, the portion that they hold. Um, we have the insertion tube, um, and then down at the tip is a light source and a, a camera as well. Um, and we also have a navigation, or we have a control lever here, so um, my thumb can articulate the end of the scope um, so that they can navigate through the lungs. Um, we also have a suction button here. Uh, typically in clinical use, it would be hooked up um, to this uh, port right here, um, and you can do suction, um, and it also has a working channel, so you can insert uh, tools, forceps, uh, brushes, different uh, tools down through this working channel, and they'll come out at the end so that they can interact with tissue as needed. Gotcha. Okay, so you can do a lot with a relatively small handheld tool. You sure can, tool. yeah. Yeah. So as you've been evaluating them here in the lab, what kind of things are you looking for? Like this isn't a brand new technology that's just come onto the scene. Right. So uh, rigid bronchoscopy in particular has been around for a really long time. Um, now currently flexible bronchoscopy is generally preferred because it's uh, a little bit, bit less strenuous. Um, it's, it's easier on the patient. Um, we also look at safety considerations. Um, in this case, uh, one of the major things that we're taking into account is whether these are single use or, bron or reusable. Um, we all know that reusable bronchoscopes um, or endoscopes in general, they're very challenging to clean and uh, disinfect appropriately. Um, and a lot of that comes down to that working channel that goes down through the length of this. Um, it's challenging to get a brush in there to flush it out um, and really be sure that you're getting everything. Um, so they come pre-packaged in uh, single-use containers. Mm -hmm. um, and so you open these at the time of use. These can be stored locally. Um, frequently, they can be stored on the unit itself. So you can have a selection of sizes that are easily available. Um, and then when you need to use it, you just need to find the cart, um, which again is small and easy to store locally. Um, and so um, typically these are faster and easier to use and get set up than a full cart. Um, so uh, in the last few years, there's been an explosion really of uh, single use bronchoscopes onto the market. Um, and the benefits of this are largely in the cross-contamination world. You don't have to worry about whether that last scope was uh, adequately reprocessed um, or go through that whole uh, procedure of doing the reprocessing. So there's, you know, uh, cleaning at the bedside that goes on. There's manual cleaning down in the, the central sterile area. Then there's the whole uh, actual reprocessing step itself. Um, so with these single-use scopes, you don't have to go through that of those units. Uh, with single-use scopes, you have a low upfront investment because these uh, monitors are much less expensive. Um, but then you have an ongoing uh, expense every time you use these scopes. Um, and so really there's kind of a crossover point where um, at low volumes of procedures, the single-use scopes typically are less expensive, and at high volumes, the reusable scopes are typically less expensive. So with the single-use one, you mentioned that they really exploded in popularity, and, and we attribute a lot of that to the avoiding the cross-contamination right, that comes with the reusable. Are there any limitations that come with using the single-use? Yeah, actually, um, there are a few, and uh, in general, it seems like a lot of facilities are currently still using primarily reusable scopes in their bronchoscopy suites because they do need some of the more sophisticated advanced features that they offer. Um, so one of the big ones is that, generally speaking, the reusable scopes have better image quality than the single-use scopes. Um, that's something that we're trying, trying to tease out through our evaluation, so stay tuned for more details. Um, another uh, benefit is that the single-use 
or I'm sorry, the reusable scopes, um, sometimes they have advanced imaging modes. Uh, so one example uh, would be Olympus with their narrow band imaging, uh, which uses different wavelengths of light to help highlight different features of the mucosa and the tissue surfaces. Mm. Um, so sometimes that can be valuable to, to uh, more advanced procedures. And then a third one is that um, the reusable bronchoscopes generally are compatible with more advanced accessories. So if you wanted to use a laser or some electrotherapy device um, or uh, an ultrasound capability, EBIS, uh, endobrachial ultrasound, um, that is currently only available with the reusable scopes. When we talk about single use, one of the things that comes to my mind, and, and I know we think about this at ECRI too, is um, the waste, right? There, there's, there's, there must be a tremendous amount of waste that's generated if we're using only single use. Yeah, it's actually something that's kind of uh, complicated to compare between the two. So obviously there is waste with single-use scopes. Um, many of the manufacturers are trying to reduce that. For example, some of them are using uh, reusable cables. So you only throw out this part and you get to mm. keep this part. So it's just it's a way to reduce the waste a little bit. Um, the waste of a single-use scope is pretty easy to quantify. You know what you're throwing out. With a reusable scope, it's a little bit more challenging because you have that whole reprocessing uh, procedure that's mm. involved. And so there's PPE, there are chemicals, there are uh, energy usage that's all bundled into that reprocessing procedure. And sometimes it's, it's difficult to really wrap that up in a neat little bow. It's not as clear cut as just saying, I've got a pile of things I threw out. Right. right. Um, but obviously, you know, this is something that people are concerned about. We've heard it from clinicians we've spoken to in the past that, you know, they really do prefer the reusable from that environmental perspective. Um, and it's something that we take seriously as well. And currently we would recommend that um, maybe you would focus your usage of the single-use scopes on those situations where there's the most benefit from the single-use scopes. So you mentioned, right, that there's been this, this explosion of the single-use over the, the last several years. Is that something that you see continuing? Are the single-use eventually going to crowd the reusable out of the market entirely? I would be surprised to see that just because of the expense of it. Um, so I think, you know, there are ongoing improvements in the quality of the single-use scopes. Um, Right now, they don't all you know, totally match up to the reusable scopes that most clinicians are used to. But what we're seeing is that a lot of facilities are using a combination of both of them to get the best of both worlds. There are advantages in uh, convenience, ease of use, and um, minimizing cross-contamination risk. Um, reusable scopes have an advantage in large volumes on uh, the, the cost over time and those advanced features. So uh, facilities are, are using a little bit of both for different applications. Finding that balance that meets their, their clinical need, yeah. Cool. Right. Mairead, thanks so much for joining us today. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching ECRI Now. You can find more insights from the experts on YouTube and at ECRI.org. Until next time, I've been your host, Paul Anderson. <laughs>